Hi everyone, this is Jim. Welcome to this uh, video. This is uh, my second uh, chest splits uh, postmortem video. It's a postmortem of my chest splits uh, with live commentary game number two. And in that game, I was playing white against Kappa Schwarza, who is black. And uh, I played e4. Kappa Schwarza played d5. And this is the center counter or Scandinavian defense. And I uh, kind of laughed when I saw this because I'd just been uh, experimenting with this myself. Played it in a couple of over-the-board games recently. Um, but he played it in a different way, uh, interesting way. So I took the pawn, which is normal, and then he played e6, turning it into a gambit. And uh, I looked at this with Houdini. Uh, I'm leaving Houdini off for now because uh, <clears throat> I have some tactical quizzes I want to uh, pop during the... Uh, during the game, and uh, I don't want the answer to be given away by Houdini. I tried this once before, and uh, the answer was always showing up there. So I'm going to leave Houdini off now, um, but I'll, I'll report on uh, what, what I saw looking at it uh, using using the computer. So the computer actually approves of this gambit. It rated that e6 and c6 as uh, moves that are about as good as uh, knight f6. And uh, queen d5 is the main move. It's also quite playable. I think it was that was also on the list. Um, <clears throat> so let's let's go ahead and see what happens in the game. I took the gambit, and he develops his bishop, and we both uh, develop normally for a while. Here, let's let's turn on the notation uh, tab. Let's see, see where we are in the game. Uh, he starts going after my uh, d5 pawn, and I defend it, and uh, I kept uh, trying to find a way to push d5 maybe get a fork against these pieces because this looks like an unstable setup here but uh, at every point uh, it's been it, it uh, during the game black adequately defends against this idea so uh, I never had a chance to push d5 um, and uh, at this point Houdini had a recommendation for black uh, instead of playing queen e2 Houdini recommends playing knight to uh, queen e. instead of playing queen e7 Houdini recommends playing knight to e4 here, taking advantage of the pin on this knight and sort of piling up on it. Now, um, at first it looks like white can just defend that, so let's uh, put in that variation so you can take a look at it. <clears throat> I, don't want, I don't really want to defend with the bishop because he can uh, take the bishop and at least have the advantage of the bishop pair. Um, so if I try defending with the queen. Houdini recommended this move here. So, um, making my queen feel a bit uncomfortable. So this is uh, kind of an interesting and enterprising way for uh, for uh, black to play. Um, when he moves the queen over to e7, it seems to uh, give uh, white a little bit of freedom. I can now castle, and uh, <clears throat> we go on developing for a while. But white has a slight advantage uh, from this point forward. And, uh, yeah, another thing is he allowed me to play this move knight b5, so maybe something other than queen d7 uh, should have been tried, maybe taking the knight right away even. Um, but this move knight d5 solves a lot of problems for me. It gets out of the way, and I can move the pawn up to c3, and I'll have a solid uh, center here on d5. And uh, this was a weakness in my position, and the knight was here preventing me from easily defending it, so... Um, black is allowing me to solve my, my opening problems here. Um, and at this point, instead of c3, there was one really interesting idea that Houdini came up with, and that was to play the move b4. So there's another new variation. Let's check it out. Um, <clears throat> in fact, uh, after b4, Houdini recommends the bishop just dropping back to here, so I've sort of gained some space for free. I can now follow up with a4 or a5 maybe. Um, and it's interesting because it looks like this pawn is just hanging. In fact, it is. It can be taken two different ways. But each way you take it, uh, there's a drawback. For example, if you take with the bishop, then that leaves this square undefended or inadequately defended. And uh, so I can just take this pawn on c7. And if you take with the knight, uh, let's take a look at this. Um, Houdini recommends coming in here, knight to e5, attacking the queen. And the queen does not have a lot of good squares. The, the knights are covering these squares. Um, Houdini recommends here, and uh, thinks white is doing well. It, it, it had as a follow-up this move. 
And so it looks like white just sacked a pawn for um, no direct material compensation, but um, to start with, he was a pawn up. So he's just giving back the pawn that black had uh, given him. So the material is now even. And uh, white's position, white's pieces are nicely positioned here in the center and towards the king. So he controls a lot of this space. And I guess this is just a, a good position for white. And that's uh, what the computer recommends. So I was following a more materialistic uh, point of view. I wanted to hold on to my pawn. And um, I was pretty happy with this position. I've got my pawn back and it seems like... Uh, I mean, I've maintained my pawn edge and and seems like I've got out of trouble in terms of uh, getting my pieces developed. So both sides proceed with uh, wing attacks. Uh, you know, I've castled kingside, east castled queenside, so it's very common. Uh, you see these attacks on the wings, starting with the pawns. Um, here, this move knight c2 is not the best. Uh, Houdini recommended knight c4. I guess a similar idea. I'm trying to get out of the way of the pawn so I can continue my pawn storm. Um, but the knight on c4 is actually a much more active piece. It is putting pressure on this bishop. And um, if it gets exchanged off, then I get the bishop pair. So that's, that's probably good for me as well. Anyway, I played knight c2. He attacks uh, my pawn on c3. I have to defend it. And uh, he cements his knight in there. And it starts harassing my pieces. So my knight goes to e3. Um, I'm getting some pressure on this pawn, so in some cases I may take that and destabilize this knight. He played this move um, g5 immediately. Houdini did not really approve. This is uh, a pawn sack. And I guess Houdini recommended playing more quietly. Moves like knight d7 to uh, knight to e7 to d5, repositioning this knight, uh, harassing my bishop. <clears throat> so. Um, but this is an interesting idea. He's trying to open up a line to my king. Uh, but the thing is, I can keep it closed by supporting the bishop here. So uh, he never really gets a whole lot out of this one. Um, so that was just uh, another sack. <clears throat> Let's see. I guess I was threatening to push b5. Houdini recommended playing a5 here to kind of stop that. Because if I take a5... Um, and I only have half open lines. I don't have a completely open line. Um, or if I push, uh, the knight can just move out of the way and, and the line just stay closed. Um, but he sacks the knight as a way of getting to the center pawn and also getting some pressure on my pieces. I play rook over to b1, not the most accurate move. It turns out uh, uh, rook to uh, a3 is much better because not only does it threaten the bishop, but it also keeps this... Uh, pawn defended, whereas when I play here, he can just grab my A pawn. So at this point, he sacked a knight uh, for two pawns. And uh, so let's count one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four. Yeah, he started out uh, having sacked a pawn initially. So so basically, he's down a knight for one pawn. So I'm, I'm probably doing pretty well here. I follow up with the uh, b5 and I got a little bit lucky here in the sense that I, I calculated this wrong in my head. Uh, I was thinking I could just take right away but it turns out of course it's it's well defended there and I can't take it. I need one more attacker but I have a nice way of getting another attacker on that square which is to bring my queen here. Queen comes to a5 with tempo because it's threatening checkmate on the back rank and uh, so he's got to do something about that. He doesn't have time to defend the pawn. So I, I, now I'm going to grab that pawn and uh, with a continuing attack. So he trades out and plays bishop b6. Okay, so here is the first uh, pop quiz. In response to bishop b6, I see, you know, my queen's attacked. My knight is under attack by the queen. So I just fall back to uh, the b4 square, defending the, the knight and keeping up. But there, it turns out, it turns out there's a much better move here, and uh, so maybe you want to take a few seconds, think about the, the move you would play in this position. And also, the what's the follow-up move? Okay, uh, I'm going to tell you the answer if you want to think some more, pause the video. The answer is, rook takes bishop on b6. And uh, this turns out to be a really killer tactic, because if he takes the rook, then you have this check, bishop to f4 check. And the, the king is really in sad shape. Uh, 
if he moves the king, it can only go to this square on c8, and then queen a8 is checkmate. So that's a maiden one. Um, and the other thing, which is kind of uh, interesting, if he puts the queen in the way, of course, I can just take the queen and be up vast amounts of material and win easily. But there's an even better way to play it. So here, let me show you this. Queen to uh, c7. I play queen to a8, check, sacking my queen. He takes the queen, which really is only legal move. And I take his queen. So you think, oh, well, maybe it's just a tra queen trade, so it's no big deal. But it's... Uh, it's actually much worse than that because I have a rook that is going to come to this square and deliver checkmate. And even though it's black's move, he has a move to try and stop this threat. There's nothing he can do. His king can only come forward one square and the rook will still checkmate. Uh, and then these rooks and pawns um, can't, can't make any threats. This pawn can't move at all. This one can only go forward one square and I still checkmate. So <clears throat> that would have been a nice way to finish the game. I totally missed that. Um, yeah, the computer says after rook takes b6, uh, black can't afford to take that back, obviously, so white is just up a piece here. Another piece, in fact. So instead, I played queen b4, and uh, he continues, putting pressure on my uh, knight here, and uh, I move it and attack his bishop, and he goes on in with another sack. You know, he's, he's down material here, and he hasn't got a good position, so he's just trying to complicate things, which is probably... A good idea. I take and he plays rookie one check. So pause for a minute and see if you can spot the tactic here. I uh, hope you spotted this one. This was pretty easy. It's kind of funny I missed this during the game. The rook is not safe on that square. I can just take it. <laughs> yeah, I missed that idea. Pretty sad. Um, so he gets to uh, play on for a while longer. And, uh, but eventually we get to this position where I'm two pieces up uh, in an end game, so it's a pretty easy win. I go ahead and give up one of my pieces just to eliminate uh, his counterplay. And, um, ah, you know, there was one other thing I wanted to look at here. The question is, what do I do if black pushes his pawn? The thing is, my, his king is attacking my rook. Um, so if I move my bishop away from the defense, then I'll be in trouble. So let's turn on the engine. I was curious about that. Um, so let's say black plays this move here. Up. Oh. Uh, let's see. Rook b2. Let's back up. It was in this position. So I played king f2. It's black's move. What if he just played f4 here? Oh, yeah, actually, this is top computer recommendation. Um, okay, I can't take it, obviously, or I'll lose the rook, but I could go to c5 or d4. I guess I'm okay. I was thinking maybe he could keep harassing my, keep harassing my bishop. Rook to b5, it says. I thought that was dangerous. Can this king come up and attack uh, these pieces? Rook to a5. Um, I guess the point is this is a winning endgame. So he's, he's now winning the bishop if he wants. But that's completely losing. Yeah, I'll show you. I'm just closer to these pawns than he is. He can't defend either of them. So that's an easy win. Okay, so f4 was an idea for black in that position. Uh, yeah, I didn't calculate that during the game. I really should have because uh, when you leave your piece where it's under attack, um, it's, it's somewhat loose. Uh, and if somebody can chase away the defender, uh, it's often a useful tactic. Okay. So uh, he didn't spot that or didn't think that was a good idea. I'm going to turn the engine off before I forget. Because um, there's one more uh, interesting tactic coming up. Okay. Yeah, there we go. There's the rest of the game. So um, I'm just moving my pieces forward. My plan is pretty easy at this point. I have an uh, extra piece. I'm just going to use that to win his pawns and uh, then, then queen one of my pawns. 
So he sacks that pawn. He was going to lose the, the uh, A pawn, um, but he, or I guess that's the H pawn. Um, but he decided to sack the F pawn instead, and then he gets to defend the A pawn. Uh, he goes for a check, comes back, but now I can block um, his rook, and there's no way for him to save that pawn. Checks again, and I grab the pawn. He attacks my pawn. I check his king and grab it to the back rank. And now it's white's turn to move, and I played king g4, uh, which is not the best move in this position. So let's back up and see. Uh, once again, I'll give you a little bit of time if you want to think about this. It's kind of an interesting position. There's a really good move here. Um, I'm going to tell it to you now. If you haven't, uh, if you want more time, pause the video. But uh, yeah, I'm going to show you what the move is. It is king to e6. And uh, I guess during the game I was thinking, well, king to e6, uh, he can move his king here and uh, walk away from the check. But he can't. <laughs> if you look at this position, it's not just the king that's guarding squares. The bishop is also guarding squares. This is a very interesting configuration with the bishop directly behind the king. So the king controls three squares. The bishop controls two more squares right adjacent. So there's, in fact, a solid bar of five squares there that this king can't cross through. So there's no way he can escape the mate. So king e6 is just a mate in two. And, and once again, this, uh, this poor rook is out of play. He can't do anything to stop it. I guess he could sack the rook here. Um, but that would, uh, would just buy a few moments of time, a few moves. It wouldn't actually... Uh, wouldn't actually stop the mate. So yeah, king e6 would get the game over in a hurry. Um, I played uh, the other way. Played king to g4. I'm uh, still winning, uh, although I did miss one thing. So after this move, black has a nice tactic. I've left uh, these two pieces in a line. When, all you, when you have your pieces lined up like that and they're undefended, um, that's just asking for a skewer, which he spotted right away. Uh, so I'm going to lose one of these. I decided to take the pawn. It's pretty easy to win. I don't even need the bishop at this point. Uh, my pawn is close to queening, and his king was not in a position to stop it because I could always check it away. So there's really no defense here. And he resigns at this point. So anyway, very interesting game, I thought. A few tactical points to learn a little bit about the opening. Hope you enjoyed that, and I'll see you next time. Bye.